What's going on guys? LCG here, back with another episode of Her Majesty's Spiffing. Last episode where we left off. <clears throat> if you don't mind, take a seat here. We have a inflatable ah, autopilot. I see Allard's doll. activated the autopilot and skived off. And we have to figure out what is going on with this sweetheart here. So let's go ahead and Call talk. Call me old-fashioned, but... I prefer the more natural look. Okay. What's I'm sorry, subject? I don't believe we've met. I'm Frank, but please, call me Captain English. Oh, Welcome, how friendly. Captain English. How may I be of assistance? Uh, oh, oh, is there a Mr. Autopilot? Uh, so, uh, how's everything going? Are we on track to be finished by tea? ETA to waypoint, Tango Echo Alpha, calculating. Calculating. Cannot define. Please refer to string length idiom for more details. Okay, so she's poorly programmed. So, how long have you been an autopilot? Calculating. Calculating. Error. You do not have permission to access this data. Oh, okay. I don't suppose there's a Mr. Autopilot, perchance? Compiler error. Incompatible types. Access denied. Oh, are you saying I'm not your type? I think I log Miss off. Miss Autopilot. It is now safe to be removed. Okay. All right. I see where this is going. So let's go find Aled. I know he's in here somewhere. He's got to be on the ship. Right? I'd like to think so. And we'll head over this way straight to the bedroom. That's going to be my first guess. And I imagine it would be everybody else's as well. Anytime you walk away from a navigating ship, or from navigating a ship. Uh-oh. Oh, Hot Wheels? Is that what that is? The Hot Wheels tracks where they do the loop-de-loop? -loop? Oh, hey there. Sub-Lieutenant Jones! Aye, boyo? What is it you're tinkering with there, Jones? That isn't... That isn't our reconnaissance rover you're disassembling, is it? Well, but, funny story. While you were downstairs attending to that very complicated, laborious task, flicking that switch on and off, I've been running a variety of pre-mission calibration tests on the Beagle 2-2. I presume that's why the floor's covered with bits of toy Hot Wheels track. Firstly, the fact that this modular vehicular pathway simulation system happens to be mass-produced and branded as a children's toy is irrelevant. And secondly, yes. No, that's fantastic. And quit calling me butt if you don't mind. I don't particularly love that. That's all well and good, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. However, if I recall correctly, we were specifically advised that the Beagle 2-2 tended to function significantly better when its complicated array of electronics and mechanical components were positioned inside its aluminium housing. Look, I just have to make a few minor repairs. During a centrifugal force resistance simulation, the rover proved exceedingly... Resistant. So it, uh, flew off the loop-the-loop -loop bit. That would be a valid interpretation of events, yes. Alright, so I gotta admit, I'm loving the British humor here. It makes me smile, but on the inside, I don't laugh out loud very often. Oh. Sounds like I'm going to be required to go on some kind of scavenger hunt. What do you need? To get the rover going again? For the time being, that's all I feel I'm obligated to offer, yes. I think the rigorous nature of the, uh, test may have burned out the main motor. I see. So, I'll have to find something to create some sort of electromagnet that'll revolve when a current is passed through it. I'll have to fashion a pulley system of sorts to drive power to the wheels. Something with a taut elastic band should do the trick, like an alluring undergarment. <laughs> now, if I was to remove the elastic... Alternatively, but you could just always grab me a spare. We've got a cupboard full of them. Quit calling me butt. Who's driving the boat? Nobody. We're tied. This is not I a turn boat. The pilot on. It's a lorry. Hmm. She was only installed a week ago, and already her standards are slipping. I don't suppose you noticed anything out of the ordinary earlier when I was performing that emergency systems reset procedure, specifically immediately once the power came back on. No. Why, should I have? Well, well, I don't know. Probably not. Forget I mentioned it. 
What was what was that? Be even sure to put your to? toys away when you're done. Okay. Uh, so we already have the motor. We found this earlier when we used the screwdriver to take the door off of that one locker. Let it not be said I don't give you anything, Sub Lieutenant Jones. An unhealthy reliance on migraine medication already proves that, but now get this mess cleared up and put the Beagle Two Two back together. Oh, the Beagle Two Two. Bam! Look at this bad boy. For the last time, the left stick moves it forward and back. The right stick turns it. By Jove, it works! In six hundred thousand yards, your destination will be on the right. You've reached your destination. No, oh, Sub Lieutenant quick. Jones, we've arrived. The new, new world. Look up on the TV. Quickly, break open a container of property of ER2 flags and prepare a landing what party. What we look like? As much as I'd love to jump onto the oh. surface and soak up the radioactive atmosphere of this uncharted, most likely fatally hazardous planet, I think it may be an idea to send the Beagle 2-2 down first, just to get a feel for the place. I've considered your suggestion, Sub-Lieutenant Jones, and have made the executive decision to send the Beagle 2-2 down for a quick recce prior to making our own triumphant descent. The extra time will allow us to properly consider which 19th century member of the aristocracy to name this place after. That's kind of neat. Launching probe. We got a, a little rover to explore with now. Oh. That wasn't very effective. Last! The motor was a dud. Probably made by a Brummie or someone else from the north. I wouldn't say Birmingham's in the north. Anyone above Enfield's north as far as I'm concerned, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. Well, we'll have to go down and salvage the rover. It'll look very embarrassing if we lose another one of these. Set us down. Good call. He has that authoritative mustache that makes me really want to follow suit and trust him. That is the law, Reef. I like how this game also cracks fun at its own genre and the fact that it is a game. He keeps making jokes about how Captain English is going to have to do some menial task and Sub-Lieutenant Jones is left to do all the hard thinking and people in the military kind of do that a lot. All right, let's all right, see. Sub-Lieutenant Jones, where have we landed? We've uh, landed on an uncharted rock structure, somewhere outside the range of what was previously understood to be the limit of human interstellar travel. Look I at those see. Beady little eyes. Not his, the other guy. Sub Lieutenant. So, Sub Lieutenant Jones, what exactly do we know about this place? Well, it's an uncharted rock structure. Somewhere outside the range of what was previously understood to be the limit of human interstellar travel. I see. So I wonder what's in these little pouches here. Typically you'd think they would have, like, you know, magazines for their rifle. But in here they have, like, candy bars maybe? And maybe there's some fine Coca-Cola? Or maybe a Schweppes ginger ale. Also, their teeth are way too perfect. I don't suppose you could British. enlighten the audience with anything a little more specific. Look, I'm called Alec Jones. Probably the most generic, stereotypical Welsh name in existence. It's clear that whoever's writing this hasn't bothered doing a terrible amount of research. I wouldn't count on anything specific. How will we go about finding the location of the Beagle 2-2? Presumably we have some kind of app for that. Hmm, I'm afraid not. We could download one. Only costs 69p. 69 pence? <laughs> I'll buy it when it's free. Right, the plan is we head out, walk around aimlessly, look at a load of stuff eliciting a series of wry remarks, then start clicking everywhere until something happens. I linger in the background and provide a series of hints if you feel things are a little too vexing. Why break tradition, eh, Sub-Lieutenant Jones? Let's go! That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. It's just a subtle but fun, you know, jibber-jabber that's like, Hey, don't forget you're playing a game. Don't take it too seriously. No, no, filled with 
Epic loot, as they say on the YouTubes. That's you guys, by the way. YouTubes. Ah, cheers, butt. Quit calling me butt. I'm tired of that. That's rude, inconsiderate, and a mite bit childish. Okie dokie. What's going on here? What do you Look see? Look for you, over there. Where? By that rock. Would it trouble you immensely to use another point of reference, Sub-Lieutenant Jones? Fine, boyo. By that gorilla. Good grief! That's the second biggest monkey I've ever seen. I think he's holding the beagle too, too. Put that down, you damn dirty ape! Come on, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. Let's get after him. Who's the biggest ape you've ever seen? That's a valid question. I'm... I'm concerned, like... It is the first biggest ape in a book somewhere? Like, is it Wreckers, or... Oh boy, oh boy, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Hold shift to run. Now I can run? What? Oh, look. Should I be taking the rock? I can't take the rock. Alright. Oh, there's parts of our rover. Woo, look at him run, look at him run, look at him run. What do we got here? A little shrub fenced in. Who's no point leaving without a souvenir? Oh, Kidoki. Well then, this isn't our ship. Let's get there. Not so fast, you English mongrels. What the do we French. have here, Pierre? Ah, oui. I see. Well, it would appear that you are too late, Monsieur English, Captain Frank Lee English. I'd just like to clarify that I'm not actually English. I'm Welsh. Monsieur English and Monsieur Welsh. It would appear that you have been too late. Monster Borden Pierre and moi have beaten you and your queen to this rich, fertile, nouveau, nouveau world. It's a bit rocky. Little bit rocky, eh? Uh, pity landscaping required. Uh, but soon, the crown you are defecating with your presence will be the location of my vast winery, growing the sweetest French crepes the world has ever tasted. And everyone will eat crepes, wear berets, carry baguettes, ride bicyclettes, and all the other things we French like to do. You're insane. Are these Am stereotypes I, I hear? <laughs> <laughs> and how are you going to stop me? Ooh, uh, the stereotypes. We intend to ridicule you into submission, exhausting an extensive list of social stereotypes conceived through years of suspicion and ignorance. Then what? Are you going to celebrate with a petit crumpet? Eh? Wash down with a cup of tea? Expose your crooked teeth while you laugh regaling this tale with your unsatisfied wives? Ha! The can play that game, Monsieur English. Okay, maybe Honestly, a puzzle. I imagine this standoff will be resolved through the completion of some sort of moderately juvenile, yet entertaining puzzle. How can you be so sure? Well, it's got us this far. I fear you underestimate the extent to which a conceited self-confidence fueled by national historical achievements can profit one in such circumstances. Ha! <laughs> We've been perfecting this same method for centuries. You'll have to do better than that. By the power of Grayskull, I have the power! Oh, mon dieu, I can't believe you actually said that. Uh, well, we could... Look! A three-headed monkey! Where? Quick, Sub Lieutenant Jones, run! Oh, man! How did I fall for that? That was so effective. I love it. Wait, you're right. I am too trusting. Mr. Mayhew. I'm a sucker for the blue eyes. What now, boy? Well, before we can legitimately lay claim to this new, new world, we need to remove their flag and hoist ours in its place. Why? Didn't they teach you history at school, Sub Lieutenant Jones? That's just how these things work. Okie dokie, so we have a trowel now. 
a small shovel, if you will. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what else we can do here. We'll take a peek around. Maybe this? No, we already got our stuff from there. Ah, run, lean back a little bit more, buddy. And boop, 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 boop. maybe this rock will be it. Uh, uh, where's where's the clicky point? All right, fine. We'll look at this one. It's a rock. Incredible. Okay. Maybe we need to go back up into the ship. So what we need to do now is find something that will distract a gorilla and a Frenchman. <sighs> so if we're playing along with the stereotypes, what we're really looking for is a banana and a white flag. That's the goal. If we can find those two items, we have won the game. And I'm hesitant to not click on every rock. Because with the way this be game's been going. Lieutenant Jones. Amuse yourself until I get back. I'll try and recollect the last couple of hours. With the way this game has been going, every single rock will have different properties. One will be the one that I need. So let's go ahead and tiddly toodle back room. Do we have any cheese? The French like cheese? Cheese and wine? That might be a thing. We might have come in here a bit prematurely. We will see. Uh, how we're doing on time? We're actually we're at about the 17 minute mark right now. So we're going to cut this episode short. I will see you guys very soon. We will kick off the next episode. Uh, looking for what to do with this little shovel thing. And looking for yet another distractor item so we can get rid of those two Frenchies. Alright, I hope everybody's having a good day. Happy holidays. Don't forget, you know, eat your oatmeal because that's what British people eat in the morning, right? Or is it just crumpets? I don't know. Either way, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Take care, and until next time.